Well, you are listening to Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm channeling some wine and crime Minnesotan or something. Minnesota. I'm, <laughs> I'm Alana. <laughs> I'm, Kel- I'm Kelsey. I can't do it with my name. Um, I know I want to do like Southern Minnesota. almost. I want to do like, um, Kelsey. I don't know why. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> Just, maybe these are the only two American accents I could do. I could say a few things like pretending you're from Boston. <laughs> Park Get the car in the yard. <laughs> Park mm. the car in Harvard Yard. <laughs> That was pretty good. I like oh my that. God. I just watched uh, <laughs> the the Glass Onion, the Knives Out <gasps> movie. So, so good. good, right? And I, oh every time Daniel Craig opened his mouth, I'm like, that accent is just so <laughs> amazingly cringeworthy and horrific that I know. I feel like I'm watching Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm brutal, curious. but I love it. Was a good movie. Oh my I liked god. It. Yeah, that Ryan Johnson, he's quite the writer director or whatever. I um, I definitely enjoyed it more than the first one. Yeah, I feel um, like it was maybe yeah. more complex, although I haven't watched the first one in a while. But Yeah, I've only I'm seen that one once. Yeah. I kind of get to rewatch it cuz Pat kind of fell asleep cuz you had been up early that day and mm-hmm. so and then Rain didn't watch it. So I'm really the only one that saw the end like most yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> So that's cool. cool. It's definitely a good one to rewatch once you know, like all everything that like how it ends up and turns out. It's like all yeah, the little hints. It's it's yeah. nice to rewatch those. Yeah, I like that. Ni- the Knives Out movies are good for that. Like going back and you see the scene from a different someone else's perspective when, yeah. or with more knowledge. Yeah, it's really cool. And then you're like, oh, well, yeah, I like how they, they shot said. that. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that one was fun. Agreed. We're such cinephiles. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, that's my $5 word for the day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me to spell it. <laughs> oh, God. <gasps> you know what? We saw a good movie about Jason Bateman being an adult in children's spelling bees, and I really can't tell you much oh, more than bad that. words yeah bad I, words I, I never watched it but it was it seemed, funny was it good okay mm-hmm. have you seen um saint vincent with bill murray and he's kind of a grumpy neighbor to um melissa mccarthy's mom character it's really good it's also I a think I funny did. it's heartwarming like you know you you think he's kind of an asshole, but you find out like he's he's kind of a really nice guy at heart. Like mm. I don't know. It's anyway. So it kind of reminds me of that one because he seems like such a dick at first. He's like he's like like uh, what is it? Trash talking the like the little kids <laughs> like to get them Savage. to mess up. <laughs> yes, it's terrible. He like says to one kid so that like oh yeah, whatever. I was with your mom last night. And then he gives her him a pair of panties. Cause he... <laughs> oh my god. It's really, you're like, oh my god, he did that. Anyway, it's worth a, a watch. I just watched a movie with Jason Bateman in it too. and I'm... Oh no, it wasn't a movie. I watched the, the Christmas special for Murderville. Oh, because um, he was in that one, yeah. Him oh, and Maya Rudolph. It was so funny. I Jason like Bateman, he has a savage sense of humor. He's like that on his po- their podcast too, Smartless. Oh yeah, people God. don't realize it. He is very oh funny. God. I love him. So funny. Did you, did you watch that Murderville one? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, my favorite thing ever is them bringing in Pete Davison, like literally right before the oh reveal. God. And he has no idea about anything. And then they're like, Pete, who do you think murdered? Or, like, defuse this bomb, and then who do you think murdered him? And he's like, there it was a murder? Like, and then my favorite oh, thing yeah. is none of them picked any of the actual suspects that they were supposed to pick. That's so right. I was dying, <laughs> laughing so hard watching um, 
because they don't ha- they don't have a script if you if anyone hasn't seen yeah. it they don't get they just are supposed to guess based on reading these ridiculous yeah, suspects. yeah. <laughs> just like watching oh fuck what's his name the one that plays the cop will arnett yes will arnett yeah. just oh, watching will him arnett. like break when like they're like you think he committed suicide and you think he was murdered by this person and and he's like so let me correct like let me understand you guys picked none of the suspects and they're like yup and i was like and you can see his like his face like just he's so trying so hard not to lose it and it's so funny oh and he thinks it's it's, hilarious is it him or sean hayes because one of them has this laugh when they fucking start laughing on smart list where they sound almost like a duck like like i can't do it it's it's great oh yeah yeah. sean hayes was hilarious which we are the worst for movie tangents we're gonna rename this castles and cryptids and cinephiles no um that would scare people away i would be like oh (laughs) um but did i tell you because you just mentioned pete davidson which made me think of this movie we just watched that had him in it did i tell you it's no it was a horror it was one rain wanted to watch it was called bodies 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 Oh, okay, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, he's he's in it. <laughs> okay, I only wanted to watch it because Lee Pace is in it, and I love him. Oh, that was... Oh, you haven't seen it. Okay, never mind. Anyway, yeah. we digress, I guess. It's very good, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. That's all, And Pete Davidson is in it, and his part ends up being pretty funny. Um, <laughs> he's kind of an idiot. But they're all tools Love in that. It. They're all very Gen Z. And like, yeah, it's... Oh, it's, yeah. It's good, yeah. All the gifts I've seen of it online make me feel like they're just, the, like, yeah, the worst people. But it's good and, like, it keeps you guessing. It's like a murder mystery where you don't know who... Oh, okay. You would not guess who the killer is or who ha- nice. really happens. Or, like, you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway so we hope you guys like movies as much as we do but i guess (laughs) we're here to talk about some other stuff some very superstitious stuff (laughs) i should have brought my mug my mom got me a mug with office little blips of office quotes and it has my Mm. favorite uh, i'm not superstitious i'm just a little stitious (laughs) and stuff like that on it (laughs) <laughs> I always think of like suspicious Aloysius. I don't know what that's from. It's from something. I, I don't know. Is it just a general term? Maybe. Or is that really a name, Aloysius? I don't it's know. It's probably one of those or I just get that see, song. You know, how to... Very superstitious. <laughs> oh, we should cut it in right here. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> we don't do fancy sound effects, guys. That's out of my wheelhouse. Uh, Go to, join our Patreon. We'll we'll get a techie guy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah! But if you do head on over to Patreon, we've got new stuff out there. We did a really fun one for December that was two truths and a lie, but with scary stories, and it was really fun. <laughs> I really like. Is it. that posted yet? Did you post it? As of right now, no. I oh, okay. I've edited it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is like I thought I checked earlier to see if I could post the page to the website. But... Post the page. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I'm like, gonna do it today because I haven't edited. Oh, okay. I just we played D and D last night because tonight is New Year's when we're recording mm-hmm. this. Anyway, it's a whole yeah. thing. I've been pretty busy this weekend, but so happy yeah, New we're... Year's, even though we haven't had our New Year's yet. Happy January 13th when this comes out. Yeah. You made it through New Year's. Woo! How is the future? Yeah. How's the future? Is it worth is it worth checking out? We hope so, because we're kind of stuck. Yeah. Oh my god. Well what's that? Sorry. I was gonna say it's a reason why we chose to do a suspense superstitious episode is because it comes out on a friday the 13th that's right yeah happy friday the 13th 
we hope it's going well for you. Um, yeah. It might not even be considered unlucky where you are. We'll get into no, it. No, <laughs> it could be very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but before we do, I have one more thing I wanted to talk about. We got a um, special code for you guys that yeah. you can get a discount with that we wanted to share with you. Because um, we're true crime podcasters. We uh, got a discount code with this um, alarm, personal alarm. It's called the Birdie device yeah. i guess <laughs> yeah birdie like a little tweet tweet <laughs> um and it sounds like well, similar to one that you had when you were yeah but thank you loud noise pull it or push it and yeah it alarms i think this one you pull yeah mm -hmm. anyway it's great for women walking anywhere <laughs> that you have to walk where <laughs> you know danger might be around um in the form of predators any Unlike... of the youths <laughs> protect you from the youths the youths <laughs> from the statistics yeah i mean you can't always be out walking with your big dog or maybe you don't have one so this one's a nice yeah. little like you know alternative to uh what's all that violent -y pepper spray or those ones that are yeah quite dangerous so you're not allowed to carry them everywhere like onto the plane and stuff like that like me yes yeah you <laughs> yeah you can get in trouble and charged for carrying some stuff like that in certain areas yeah. so yeah. brass knuckles they frown upon those <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> um, so if i got this right if you guys want to get 10 percent off <laughs> stay with me here <laughs> the code is castles cryptids 15 possibly yeah. because i'm a dumbass and maybe read something wrong but you do get a discount you get 10 percent off but the code is castles cryptids 15 one five yeah i'm so sorry this well, is my first time being a birdie ambassador <laughs> yeah we'll put the we'll write the discount code in the episode description too and then you can yes. just copy and paste it and we'll Shall put be a link. in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, link to the website as well. You can take a look. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think I'm going to buy one probably. They, they seem cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit of extra security for yourself. Yeah. And they were like, they're under 40 bucks. Like, yeah. $30 or something. Like, that's reasonable. I can afford something like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Well, do you have any thing you want to talk about before we dive into our no, I didn't have any craziness. Else. Okay, then I'm gonna shut up for a while because I feel like I've talked so much. Oh my god, it's all the sugar. I'm drinking a mango pineapple smoothie oh <laughs> uh, yeah that'll do it uh, hopefully i don't cough too much because you know all that milk shit <laughs> yeah all the fat in it i think is what That's does it good. yeah mm, fat <laughs> mm. <laughs> so in honor i guess of this coming out on friday the 13th i decided to look up the history i guess the lore around the superstition that is Friday the 13th. Yay, um, I'm excited. I think I've mentioned before that I don't really pertain to it, I guess, because my mom was born on a Friday the 13th and she Aww. hasn't really, she always finds it to be a lucky day and stuff like that. Well, yeah, so. I think that would give it a very special connotation for you. Yeah. Yeah. What month was she born in? March question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that like was awesome. it's <laughs> Wait. I'm like, no. I don't think I have it on my phone. Wait, that's the day before mine. Is it the day before mine? I feel like yeah. that's true. You've probably told me that before. Yeah. That's a great birthday. It yeah. was my Papa's birthday too, my grandpa. Oh, nice. That's so funny. I think that's it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. March. 
bitch. <laughs> no, because I always get confused because another one of my friends is in May and I always seem to like flip them that I think hers, my mom's is in May and my other friends and it's in March. Yes. That's from like March? Dad's birthday. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, dad. You're probably not listening. It's fine. <laughs> uh so friday the 13th uh when mm -hmm. there there will be kind of two different things we'll talk about we'll talk about the 13th i guess as like a day as a number uh because that has its own kind of thing going on and then the yeah. extraness <laughs> of it being friday the 13th so when friday awesome. falls on the 13th day of the month it is considered to be very bad luck in basically just western culture okay uh Us. well <laughs> and americans yeah. <laughs> americans basically uh well in some cultures such as ancient egyptians and then in countries like italy they actually consider 13 to be a very lucky number yeah yeah i come i came up across this a little ours are a little bit tied because i did a lot on yeah numbers yeah and j unlucky numbers and dates in general so this is going to be really yeah. very very so good information deep. i think yeah I love so this stuff. for the friday the 13th it's uncertain when the belief began but superstitions around the number 13 specifically have been around for centuries um in western cultures the number 13 has has historically been associated with complete or now, in Western cultures, the number 12, I think okay. yeah, that was supposed to be the number 12, has historically okay. been associated with completeness, with Ooh. mathematicians and scientists consider 12 often being considered to be a perfect number um, in, like, the ancient Damn. world, because it's, like, even, it's divisible. Uh, yeah. They really like 12. And... It's a nice uh, round. It's a dozen. You bake cookies yeah. in it. <laughs> yeah. So ancient Sumerians developed a numerical system based on the use of 12 that is still used for measuring time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Which is pretty cool. So that's like ancient Sumerian. That's like, I mean, what, the yeah. oldest civilization, basically? <laughs> right. That's some staying power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh other examples of 12 is that there's two 12 hour segments in a day there's oh. the 12 days of christmas that we just have there's 12 months and 12 zodiac signs right 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 yeah there was 12 labors of hercules there's 12 gods oh. of olympus as well as 12 tribes of israel there was like yeah, there's lots of 12s everywhere. There really is. I've yeah. never really seen them all like laid out like that before. Right? Or like heard yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and on the flip side, 13 has a pretty long history of bad luck. Um, I put because it's kind of an odd and undividable number. Can't I think divide anything myself. <laughs> into 13 evenly. That's true. It's a baker's dozen. Yeah. yeah. But what do people got against these prime numbers anyway? <laughs> they're just they're just as good. <laughs> I don't think there's like nothing inherently like wrong with any number. It's all what we put on it. It's so crazy. Yeah, this <laughs> has some stuff going on. Thirteen does that's pretty specific. Yeah. Um, according to biblical tradition, which is where most of the stuff with thirteen comes from, we believe. Uh, there are 13 guests yeah. at the Last Supper, and it's held right. on a Thursday, with the um, next day actually being Good Friday and the day of Jesus' crucifixion. So right, there's a, <laughs> yeah, there's a so Christian cute. superstition that seating 13 people at one table is a bad omen. Um, I could see that they're a little, yeah. <laughs> they're a little shy about that number now at the dinner yeah. table. I, I get it. <laughs> uh, other <laughs> Christian traditions include Friday being the day that Adam or that Eve gave Adam the apple from the tree of knowledge. So that's for oh, that Friday. Eve. 
as well as Friday being the day that Cain killed his brother Abel. Um, so that's bad things uh, about Friday and bad things about 13. Yeah. And then yeah. the combo. <laughs> um, at the same time, in ancient Norse mythology and lore, there are uh, holds that evil and turmoil were first introduced in the world by the appearance of the treacherous and mischievous god Loki at a dinner party in Valhalla, and he was the 13th guest. Of course. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> uh, which, again, upset the balance of 12 gods already in attendance. So that's another 13 people, presumably Damn at one it, table. Loki. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, these are the things I should have looked up how to pronounce. One of these I already <laughs> knew how to pronounce, and that is triskaidekaphobia. Right. There's which a is spelling the, word for you. <laughs> yeah. Triskaidekaphobia is the fear of the number 13, like just the number. Yeah. And then the two words I should have looked up how to pronounce. <laughs> um, it's it... frigatriskadecophobia or... Oh. Fear of Friday uh, the 13th? Yeah, or it's also called Paris... Decatriophobia. It's like different. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What is like way shorter for some reason? <laughs> um, yeah, Paris Gavadiatriophobia. Wow. Uh, or Frigatresca Decaphobia. It's like they're both Friday the 13th. It just depends. But they they both mean the fear of Friday the 13th specifically, where Triska Decaphobia is just the fear of the number 13. There's so many crazy specific phobias. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, most of the information I got was from, like for my segment, was from history.com. Uh, as I well like as history.com. <laughs> yeah, they're good. They had a lot of good information. There was also stuff on New York History.org, um, which we'll get into. And then there was also okay. time.com. So I think that's just Ooh. time that was just Time magazine. But New York and they didn't History make you pay for it? Oh no, that's like some of those like New York Times and sometimes they're like, log in and I'm like, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have I normally have like a couple free articles a month because I try not to go into it unless I have to. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's what is it? Lucy on Wine and Crimes boyfriend. She calls it Britannica.com. <laughs> that's mm. also a good one for like well, encyclopedic knowledge, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I kind of stopped using it because it really only has like a paragraph or two about each thing. And that's it's normally true. like basically what you can find somewhere else or like on Wikipedia. So I yeah. kind of stopped like using it at all. Yeah, for our stuff, it's not as <laughs> yeah. relevant. <laughs> yeah, because you're like, I need the details. Deep dives, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so from newyorkhistory.org or nyhistory.org, it uh, just had a little quote saying that re researchers estimate that as many as 10% of the U.S. population has a fear of the number 13. 10%? Okay. Yeah. And each year, the even more specific fear of Friday the 13th um, results in financial losses in excess of $80 million annually. That's as, crazy. Yeah, because but... people try to avoid getting married. Uh, they often avoid traveling or even in the most severe cases, going to work. Wow. <laughs> they just want yeah. an excuse not to come in. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it continued on saying, according to the Stress Management Center and Phobia Institute in Asheville, Oh. or Asheville, I don't know, there's an E in the middle, Asheville maybe, North mm. Carolina, more than 80% of high-rise buildings in the United States do not have a 13th floor, and the vast majority of hotels, hospitals, airplanes, and airports avoid using the number 13 for rooms or gates. Oh, yeah, yeah. you don't see like a gate 13 very often. Yeah. Hmm. Gate 65? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. There's like right. so many gates when you go to the Toronto airport. It's insane. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, mm. So I tried to put like 
I guess the causes of possible Sorry. this like phobia Friday the 13th kind of in order but I saved yeah. kind of the most interesting for the end Ooh, um, okay. or I guess not really the most interesting the funnest I thought okay um, <laughs> so the first thing uh which I don't know a lot about but I know you do is the Knights <laughs> Templar I dun, dun, dun. want to know lots more about them. But yeah, it's like it comes yeah. up a bit on mostly yeah. Curse of Oak Island and different so, <laughs> theories. So this is said to, other than like the religious thing, this may be like the best cause of Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Out there because on Friday, October the 13th in 1307. The right? Double 13's going on. Yeah so fucking long ago yeah it's inconceivable yeah. <laughs> uh officers of king philip the fourth of france arrested more than 600 of the knights templar wow um, yeah, that's so many <laughs> like yeah they uh... at the time were a powerful religious and military order formed in the 12th century for the defense of the holy land and they had vowed to protect pilgrims that traveled to the holy land following the capture of Jerusalem during the First Crusade. So they were, like, protecting okay. people. Um, when they were arrested, these 600 members, they were imprisoned on various charges of what was said to be illegal and lewd behavior, such as heresy, uh, devil worship, of spitting, course. <laughs> spitting on the cross, yeah oh my god uh, spitting on the cross and even homosexuality fraud and yes. uh financial <laughs> corruption but i mean they like weren't perfect i, I feel like they yeah. they ended up with like a lot of spoils after their crusades and stuff but <laughs> oh, like yeah. still that's oh, those sounds so outlandish altogether well Little really behavior. <laughs> why they were arrested in truth is because the king just wanted access to their huge financial resources that they yeah. had received over the years from the donations from different heads of state and right and just by he, like they owe him or he owe them money too maybe i can't remember I like know. yeah i don't think he had a lot of money <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, okay you're just a greedy pig so by the 14th century, the Knights Templar had established a system of castles, churches, and even banks throughout Western Europe. Wow. And many Templars were later executed after the arrest, after suffering pretty brutal torture for a period of a few, like, weeks, and oh. sometimes even years. Oh, uh, God. They were reported that the tortures included having your hands tied together behind your back, and then being suspended in the air by a rope that was tied to your wrists that would effectively just like dislocate your shoulders. Oh, just sounds fucking terrible. Oh um, my god. Yeah. What the fuck. And then there's just the good old being stretched out on those racks. They just like you know those it. people just have to enjoy their job to be doing that kind of gross stuff, right? Yeah. Like, you're just sadists. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Uh, and people also, they also had their feet dipped in oil, and then they were held over a fire to burn. Oh, and lovely. Get them all crispy. Yeah. Sorry. Right? <laughs> that's these so terrible. These tortures caused hundreds of the imprisoned men to confess to these made-up allegations, and then basically after they confessed, they were just executed. Um Mine's will be the uh, any of the witch trials or anything like yeah. that. They're not really trials. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're just public farces or whatever. Yeah, because if you refuse to confess, you basically stayed there. Um, yeah. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not exactly. all of them ended up confessing. And the trials were later shut down by Pope uh, Clement V in early 1308. Uh, so that oh, wow. was how many months? They were October. I think it was like about five or six months that they That's had been in prison long. at that point. And many of the Knights Templar, uh, after even the trials were shut down, many of them lingered in cells for another two years before King Philip oh, great. had more than 50 more of them burned at the stake in 1310. What? 
Yeah, just just for fun. Yeah, two years after. Right when everybody's like forgotten about it, maybe he's like, okay. Yeah. Jeez. Um, two years after that, Pope Clement formally dissolves the Knights Templar Order, and in the wake of the order being dissolved, some of the final men in captivity again started confessing um, to the made-up allegations in order to try and gain their freedom. Aww. And some of them did this time, um, but others did end up eventually dying in captivity. Damn. Uh, in the spring of 1314, the Grand Master Jacques de Molay, de Molay, Ooh. Uh, he was the <laughs> Order's treasurer. Uh, he, oh, along okay. with several other Templar members, were burned at the stake in Paris. Oh and it's said that this put, like, ended up effectively putting an end to the Knights Templar. Um, no doubt. That's how many more of them could there have been? Such yeah. a big chunk. Yeah. So some historians cite this, like them being arrested originally on Friday the 13th, um, as possibly being the origin of Friday the 13th superstition, but this is pretty much unconfirmed. I mean, um, definitely had to start, yeah, it has to start somewhere and then it probably just yeah. snowballs as it goes along and definitely picks up steam. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Ugh. Another example is a novel that was released in 1907. It was actually, or it was published under the name Friday, comma, the 13th. Oh. Um, so very on the nose. It was yeah. published by Thomas William Lawson. Um, a time, all I have is really the synopsis on this one. It said that the book told the story of a New York stockbroker who plays on superstitions about the date Friday the 13th in order to create chaos on Wall Street and make a killing on the market. So I assume it's like insider trading, but he's like caught, like it, it using Friday the 13th to like fuck people over. Right, knowing that they'll probably not want to do much on that day. And so maybe he then, yeah, yeah, does whatever goes in. But that just reminded me of the maybe. thing they were talking about, like they lose so much money each year. And everything over people not wanting to do stuff on Friday the 13th. Uh, wow. Yeah, like it's, yeah. he's, he probably started that trend. <laughs> I think, yeah, that specific portion of it. Yeah. Yeah, is probably from the book. Um, Especially because, like, up until the 1900s, are people going to really, if you have to eat, you have to do whatever, you have to get yeah. married, like, are you going to really, like, wait? You do have the luxury to wait and plan everything. <laughs> as nicely as you do today i don't know <laughs> i don't know but i find people back then it was we've talked about before there's a lot of very weird superstition and like rituals yeah. people did um, yeah before science you do you probably had to kind yeah. of cling to something <laughs> yeah um so the the next one brings us up even to now with the good old friday the 13th movies Yes. Um, which I don't think I've ever seen a single one of them. Um, I was going to say, I don't know the ones as well as Halloween, yeah. which Pat's always watching. Is that the, is those, those are the ones with Jason? Yeah, with the Hosky mask. So the yeah. franchise first released in 1980 introduced uh, Jason, the Hosky, Hosky, hockey mask wearing killer. That's how and we pronounce it here. No, Hosky. <laughs> Uh, it's one of the probably the best examples of like a fear of Friday the 13th in pop culture and it's won yeah. several sequels like so many sequels comic books so many. video games lots of merchandise versus and Halloween Jason. costumes <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry um, and then just some miscellaneous things this was from history.com that said uh this was just from their website. It had like a little list. This is some other tragic things that happened on Friday the 13th, Ooh. including the German bombing of Buckingham Palace in September of 1940. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but it's shitty. <laughs> yeah. 
the murder of <laughs> Kitty Genovese in Queens, New yes. York, March 1964. I've definitely heard about that case before, yeah. Yeah. The, a cyclone that killed more than 300,000 people in Bangladesh in November of 1970. Damn, that's a big insane. Yeah. yeah, that's insane. There was the disappearance of a Chilean Air Force plane in the Andes in October of 1972. Ooh, you don't want to disappear in the Andes. You'll have to eat each other. <sighs> yeah. Uh, the death of rapper Tupac in September 1996. Oh, damn. That's when Tupac went down. Yeah. And it was so pretty. Sorry. <laughs> and the crash of costa concordia cruise ship off the coast of italy which oh, killed costa 30 concordia. people yeah okay i remember that one pretty yeah that was like yeah it was for... january 2012 okay damn yeah. so that's the ones that history.com had um but then when you look up friday the 13th of course comes up with these cool things among them called something called the 13 club um, which I think is probably the most fun thing about Friday the 13th and 13th club okay yeah what is this? <laughs> so this was a 19th century secret society that was formed by a New Yorker named Captain William Fowler who was born in 1827 and died in 1897 um Wow, okay. And he had good luck with the number 13 all his life. Um, this was only listed in one of the sources. I can't remember which one. But it said in his youth, he attended Manhattan's public school number 13. He graduated okay. at age 13. Later as graduated a bill... Graduated at age 13? Holy shit. Yeah. Later That's... as a builder, he erected wow. 13 structures in New York. Uh, on April anyway sorry <laughs> doesn't matter doesn't matter yeah. I was like he's super smart if he graduated high school at age 13 yeah I don't know what but, it was okay. didn't say um later as a builder he erected 13 structures in New York on oh. April 13th 1861 he went to Washington at the head of a hundred head of 100 union volunteers he also fought 13 battles during the Civil War and he resigned wow. his commission on August 13th, 1863. Oh, that must have been good. That must have felt nice. <laughs> After 13 battles. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it also said that as an adult, Fowler became the 13th member of the ancient Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine. That's a name. Sounds so fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> mystic and shrine. This was said to be one of just 13 of the secret and social organizations to which he belonged. So he loves 13. It's like wow. his favorite number. Um, <gasps> like the Winchester house. Doesn't it have all 13s? I should remember. I wrote the notes. <laughs> I think she had a repeating remember. thing for 13. Like window yeah. panes and, you know, everything was 13, 13. Probably. 13. So, <laughs> um... I did put some pictures on the drive. I didn't tell you before because it has to do with this club. Um, so if you want to uh, look on the drive. Yes. Um, drive. So Fowler sought to challenge the stigma surrounding the number 13, especially this unwritten rule about 13 people being seated at a table uh, mm -hmm. because he himself had never had any negative experience with the number or the date 13. So he founded an exclusive society called the 13 Club. I want to be in it. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. There's ones today that people have like done, but it this was the original one. Um, oh, okay. As far as I can tell, they met at the first um, like 13 day of the year. So I think probably January 13th. Um, they just met once a year and the group Wait. regular so today when this comes out <laughs> January yeah, 13th it would be the ah! exact day. <laughs> they're meeting right now maybe 
<laughs> yeah, because it says, yeah, the first meeting took place on January. Um, wow. Yeah, so they regularly dine on the 13th day of the month, I believe just in January. And they dined in the room 13 of the Knickerbocker Cottage, which it was a popular social building, kind of like a bar and like, I guess, like nice. meeting place. Um, I love that word, Knickerbocker. <laughs> it's so fun to yeah. say. <laughs> we should bring it uh, back. <laughs> let's just get popular again. There's still stuff in New York about it because of Knickerbocker. That's where the Knickerbocker oh, okay. Hospital was. That's where this is in New York. Oh. Um, the it was a popular social building slash like kind of bar meeting out place. I guess Fowler had oh. owned it from September thirteenth, eighteen sixty three, to <laughs> Friday, April thirteenth, eighteen eighty three. So he added the <laughs> Friday in there. Um. So leading up to the first meeting, Fowler went about recruiting men over the course of a year. And finally, at 8.13 p.m. on Friday, January 13th, 1882, the first 13 club dinner was finally assembled. Wow. They're really taking it to the down to the minute. <laughs> yeah, right? 8.13. Yeah, they're uh, leaning in hard. <laughs> they're gonna lean even harder. There was, it's fun. I feel like uh, it's something people would do now. Uh, yeah. So, uh, before sitting down to eat, members were required to pass beneath a ladder and a banner that oh. said "Moratori T Salamutas." Ooh, Sa no Latin. Moratori T. Salatamus, which is Latin for, okay. it's hard to confirm, it's either Latin for those of us who are about to die salute you, or we oh. who are about to die salute you. So that oh was like God. what the banner read. Um, oh, now so I just hear to... that song. For those about to rock, we salute. Oh. <laughs> it's based off of some some battle some like commander in a battle set it before um that's where it comes from okay no, that goes <laughs> yeah it's back. part of like a, a longer quote um cool. so at the table die. great like thanks <laughs> yeah it makes us feel so much better <laughs> um so at the table uh there was 13 candles lit for a 13 course meal that oh, of course <laughs> Wow, is said a lot to of have, <laughs> yeah it's said to have consisted of big platters of lobster salad that had been molded into the shape of a coffin okay <laughs> which i love there's actually a picture of it this is real um okay. i have so there's on the website there'll be pictures <laughs> yeah it's the one that says coffin that's like the tuna salad or possibly even the table i don't know it says, it says dinner it says table oh. number nine, but they were all seated at the, the same table. table. Okay. Um, the table card or something. Hmm. Yeah, there's also a couple of the menus, which is fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, these got these lobster salad coffins. There's salt cellars, which I think is supposed to be like a salt shaker. Um, these yeah. all were laying knocked over on the table like pre-knocked over what? and it was strictly forbidden to toss a pinch of salt over your shoulder you weren't allowed to do it <laughs> because so no that's what um yeah because isn't that yeah. supposed to negate your bad luck if you spill salt or something yeah. they're like no you're not allowed to do any of that shit yeah you weren't allowed to <laughs> um, don't be in a wussy now <laughs> yeah mm. So, yeah, subsequent dinners followed this same pattern, the 13 meals under the ladder, under the thing, um, under that banner. And reporting on the club's first annual meeting the following year, there was a scribe um, that wrote, quote, out of the entire role of membership, whether they have participated or not at the banquet table, not a single member is dead or even had a serious illness. <laughs> On the contrary, God. so far as can be learned, the members during the past 12 months have been exceptionally healthy and fortunate. Um, Good. Great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, the menus are kind of fun if you look at them. There's 
Oh my god, such fancy, yeah, there's like rich foods. Some of it's just coffee and like, uh, yeah. what? There's a put a pudding just... souffle, a vanilla pudding souffle. There's oh, that sounds good, but yeah, I get it. Uh, sometimes the courses aren't that big. You get like the cheese course yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, wow. but the one menu is from eighteen ninety nine. Uh, so and old. then what's this other? There's Feast by the Sea. That was another year. I don't know which one this one is. It what sounds year like that a one fun, is. fun dinner to go to. Um, but then there's actual like covers. So there was an annual report that was done each year, and the cover of them had these drawings. So the third picture, um, is the eighteen ninety four cover, and it has like a skeleton like kind of just like sitting and he has like his chin in his hand that was the cover of the yeah basically the thinker like, pose pamphlet. yeah, yeah from the statue similar. it's like um, okay this is very like metal for the 18 yeah <laughs> it, 100%. um it's also the 13th annual report cover these are the only two covers I could find anywhere and it has mm -hmm. basically looks like the grim reaper under an umbrella that one's a lot less detailed i like the other one better but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a little bit more cartoonish almost um i only have a bit more just that four former u.s presidents including chester a arthur grover cleveland benjamin harrison and theodore roosevelt were each former members of the 13 club oh one time or okay another yeah so, like, they got some celebrities in there yeah um oh, i believe it was all probably before they were presidents and similar groups uh one called the morgue club and one called vampires uh during this time started to spring up around the country but oh my they all all basically eventually died down yeah. well the 13 club continued to pop up in newspaper stories as late as the 1920s it also eventually faded out of existence but it was around for what a good 40 years that's cool um, too bad it's yeah still they going. First... there are some <laughs> there are some when you look up the 13 club there is ones and they there was one from 1960 something another one from like 1990 Ooh. that i found like articles written about so obviously it's not the same group yeah um that's cool but when I was writing the notes for this, it was funny because I, there was like two things that it made me think of. And the first one was the Midnight Club. Um, yeah. Because they Netflix get together show. at midnight and they have like their thing that they say. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like to those of us who are about to die, salute you. Like, well, and this thing. one's kind of hinges on the morbid and that one was a group of yeah. kids that were in a hot like gonna die they were in hospice care so yeah it does have this a very similar vibe i guess you could say <laughs> yeah and then there was something else i can't remember what it was i should have written it down or something <laughs> i've forgotten it now i hate that that it also <laughs> like reminded me of of like the saying kind of thing um yeah oh. but i cannot remember what it was it's not the rock song, obviously. No. That was the first thing I would do. I can't. I don't know who sings that either. No. People are screaming that at me. No. <laughs> well, if it comes to you. Yeah, I wish I hadn't forgotten it. Yeah, it was something. About the, it's something similar to the... To, to do with the saying, those about to... For those, it's such a weird one. What is it? To those of us who are about to die, we salute you what did it say uh there's those of us who are about to die salute you or we who are about to die salute you okay yeah but no there we're was gonna something die else about, like, we salute you it's i don't <laughs> no, there was something else about like the annual like dinner or meeting kind of thing yeah i can't um... remember what it was I like when they are going out on this members of the 13 club it says yeah. going on a driving excursion and they're just like all piled into this one weird looking yeah. car wagon thing 
I think it's yeah, it's gotta be yeah, some sort of wagon, but I don't see like a horse. I don't know when they had like actual running like motor vehicles. Yeah. It's yeah, there's like more car wheels than wagon wheels, but I don't know what's going on at the front. There's two people at the front, they're like maybe just holding on to the side. It doesn't look like they're like (laughs) there's no steering wheel that I can see. It's very strange. Yeah, it's gotta be towed behind Um, something or I don't know. I don't know if it said a date on that one in the source. I don't think so. But yeah, it was members at one point, but yeah, it was fun. It was, I don't know, it seems fun. They were trying to get rid of like the superstition and it worked, I guess. It reminds me of those like big ass multi-person like bike things you see yeah Yeah, and people are always out on like some sort of pub crawl and they're all peddling it like some sort of big old centipede it was that or good kind of human centipede sorry basically like the the carts in like india and stuff where you see everybody is just kind of like sitting like that or they're hanging off the roof and the sides of it yeah yeah they have different street car well they've got tons of shit there i guess but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah when i saw that originally that's what i thought of was like india just like nice. hanging off the side of a bus so it's like oh my god yeah uh speaking of asia russell sent us a bunch of weird like asian kit kats and different oh yeah um yeah th- packages with things that i can't read i don't know what it is i'm like is this a cookie it looks like a poop laying in the bath or it's supposed to be chocolate laying in a bath i don't know oh, weird <laughs> on the package you're like i don't know what this is but i'm gonna eat it <laughs> i'll have to yeah. have you over and get you to try some of the weird kit kats with me they're like green tea flavor or that kind of thing i i've had a bunch of the ones um oh, okay yeah was it roger or whatever his wife it, like or something oh, had to gone to with, visit yeah. yeah her sister and she had brought a whole bunch back and i remember getting some when yeah. i was working at west yeah i couldn't remember if it was from people that went from travel department or they always yeah. seem to bring back the weird chocolates <laughs> Yeah, I think I had like five or six different ones. But, yeah, because they have like cookies and cream. They have, yeah, the green tea oh. one. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of strange ones. Yeah. Weird candy. Yeah. That should be yeah. a Patreon mini <laughs> Let us know what you guys want. <laughs> we go crazy over there. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We will take a quick break and be back for more good luck, bad luck. (laughs) And we're back. Yeah, we are. (laughs) We are very back and ready to talk about other unlucky numbers and dates. But first, a fun fact about fact, fun fact (laughs) about uh something else that's considered unlucky um in several parts of the world as i learned that has nothing to do with numbers though so i'm just throwing it in here as a fun fact oh, okay uh, <laughs> yeah uh it's considered in parts of indonesia uh unlucky to point at a rainbow <laughs> at a rainbow no they're uh, so nice it's a double rainbow <laughs> and then yeah i was listening to this on a a podcast, of course, but they went on to say that it's bad luck also in India. It was mentioned in the Grimm Brothers books, one of their books. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, the, and in fact, it's found in over 124 cultures. They say that it's bad luck. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard it. It's like, what? I would have thought um, maybe like bad luck to maybe just point but pointing at a rainbow is supposed so specific it's so specific and also the different things that they say will happen so i think it was this might be in indonesia but in some places it's they'll say that your finger will stay will turn into a rainbow (laughs) 
like it just turned into this curved claw ah. <laughs> i think that's like, like arthritis <laughs> it reminds me of like your face is gonna stick that way if you make a face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I th- where was it in navajo legend they said they believe if you point at a ring bow that you're gonna lose that finger it's gonna get chopped off jesus <laughs> it's wild all right. It's pretty intense. <laughs> be like that rainbow over there. Just point with your head, that one. <laughs> just be, just be careful, guys. I don't know, or be like the Thirteen Club and just fuck it and say, right. you know, whatever. Throw caution to the wind. <laughs> yeah, there was pictures. Some of the newer ones I saw. I think it was one of the ones from like the sixties. Uh they had like open umbrellas like people would eat with like an umbrella over their shoulder like the whole oh. time, like a black umbrella open indoors like <laughs> and they had oh, ladders yeah. set up so they had that. and then one of them even had the coffin thing like on the table again but from the caption is like the only reason i figured out it wasn't from the one from like the 1800s but <laughs> wow i was like oh yeah that has to be a different one then <laughs> They look all Victorian Gothic. <laughs> yeah, they do. Well, everybody's just in suits, and then every all the pictures are like in black and white, so you just assume it's yeah, yeah. older than it is, I guess. <laughs> Looks like a funeral in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, there's very divided <laughs> feelings on unlucky numbers mm-hmm. <laughs> around the world. <laughs> it's everywhere it's a little different almost um yeah. and people can't even agree if even numbers are lucky or odd numbers you know <laughs> yeah no, nothing yeah said that they one was good or the other <laughs> yeah um so divided up by cultures um and that's not even getting into like actual numerology or anything really like that which is more like yeah. i guess the study of symbology of numbers or certain numbers um oh but there is some argument that even numbers are better because they are more perfect if you know they're yeah. more the div- dividable divisible thing they dividable, don't make our head hurts with fractions and map <laughs> decimal points yeah no leftovers <laughs> Yeah. Um, no baker's dozen. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that a thing other places? That's 13. Oh. Pardon me. Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah. Just It's the extra one, just in case one of them gets messed up and you can't <laughs> eat baker's dozen. I always end up with a real s- small, usually a small, from the, the smallest end of the cinnamon roll biscuit thing that i'm cutting oh. so then this one it was such just like one little curl so i was like look rain it just looks like a little asshole she was like oh especially because it's got the the brown sugar based yeah it before it was baked oh yeah <laughs> it looked like a little butt only. anyway um a i do the baking butt. i swear you you do know. yeah <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so do, 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 do. oh yeah, uh, the the thirteenth being unlucky. I that came up with the numbers too, and and something about a Norse myth. But that sounds like what you were talking about, where there were twelve dinner guests, and then one more shows up, and all hell broke loose. But I didn't know that it was Loki. <laughs> yeah, that's all I had on that one. <sighs> oh. Mine just said tremendous destruction followed. <laughs> so I should have known. I should yeah. have known. Um, so some folks are so into the, what is it, even numbers or odd numbers being better. I don't get this one very well. That they believe it, it's better to tear the corner off a $2 bill, giving it an odd three-sided edge just in case. But what? also that's who has two dollar bills anymore i don't know it's not that relevant yeah we have toonies yeah most countries 
I think yeah. have the you yeah who has one two dollar bills I know Canada used to have a two dollar bill yes I looked up when we phased ours out it was 1989 wait no that was the Looney <laughs> 1996 we got rid of our one dollar bills in 1989 our two dollar bills in 1996 yeah I remember my mom had one for a while yeah. she was like I'm gonna hang on to it you know <laughs> um yeah I don't know if the U.S. does. They had the two, they had the one dollar, and then they have a five. Yeah. That's yeah. the next one, yeah. Um, sometimes it said that number three is lucky because a man, I put man plus woman plus baby equals family. <laughs> Which is so fucking, <laughs> what is it from the Muppets? Do do you, do do me, do 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 baby, do 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 family. <laughs> Oh, like, I don't know. I never watched The Muppets or, like, Sesame Street. I so. hope it's from that. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it's also noted that holy, the Holy Trinity is mm. three that's considered holy. <laughs> it's true, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Islam actually has three main holy sites, I guess, so that's cool. Hmm. Um. I know that's that one place with the black, the temple dome or whatever, where it's like holy for three. It's, you know, Hindus, uh, I want to say Christianity and Judaism. And they like all go around the one place and try oh, and touch it. It's, oh my God, it gets um, so thick with people. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it, they also said that pagans <clears throat> might choose to celebrate the trinity of land water and air so that's a three yeah i mean there's not as many things as like when you were saying for what was it 12 there was so much yeah but three i'd say out of all like the odd numbers three is probably the nicest odd number <laughs> it looks like it should be lucky yeah. uh, we say three times a charm to yeah. the third time's a charm or whatever um, but also a lot of times people say that bad things come in threes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, that's yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. We say that, uh, a lot of times you hear celebrities tend to die in threes or we're always on the lookout maybe for two more after we know one yeah. big one we know died. Um, this was kind of weird. Some people believe if you break something big at your house, you should smash two smaller things that you don't really care about just to head off accidentally <laughs> breaking two more bigger things major things that's shitty <clears throat> it's like asking people to break their own stuff oh that sucks. i feel like yeah i don't think i want to subscribe to that one <laughs> or subscribe or whatever all right uh lighting three cigarettes at once is considered bad bad luck <laughs> You don't I say. Like for Leads one person, death. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. That one picture where the guy's got... Yeah. I think it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. His mouth is just stuffed <laughs> full. <laughs> oh, so gross. Um, But actually, there's I have a little bit of a theory on that one a little later that I read. Put a pin in it. <laughs> um, Nine is sometimes considered very lucky or maybe three times as unlucky if you're not into three <laughs> being a good number yeah. <laughs> but we have examples like people say you're on cloud nine or you're dressed mm. to the nines these yeah. are good things on the bad side we do have the cat of nine tails the cat of nine tails which is that multi nine tail rope or whip that people get lashed with Oh, okay. It's really nasty. Um, some believed it would work their magic on the offender, transforming him into a worthy seaman. I don't know if this is your beating your sailors. So that they'll... <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Be a better sailor. <laughs> Maybe Russell can tell me if that's yeah. something she heard about in Old Navy lore. <laughs> Weird. Um... 
Oh yeah, this is the next page, yep. Yeah. <laughs> However, in Japan, the word for nine sounds very similar to the word for torture and suffering, so it's considered unlikely oh. for that reason. Shit, okay. Yeah. They're just like, uh, guilty by association. <laughs> yeah. Four, um, let's just go in order here. Four is an interesting one. Some think it's lucky for the way it shows up in nature. There's four seasons, four elements, the four cardinal directions. So it's got mm. some, but I guess that makes sense. There's a lot of 12, four is a yeah. what, what byproduct or four divides into 12. <laughs> Three times. No, <laughs> I know. I'm like, what am I trying to say? Uh, but in places like Asia, namely China, Vietnam, Korea, and Japan, I guess, it's actively avoided. So mm -hmm. it's, it sounds like the word for death in Cantonese is what I read. So that's apparently why it's considered quite unlucky. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I did yeah. have like a little blurb about, it said like four in China is considered, and I like copied and just like deleted that whole section of it. notes and be like, don't read it. <laughs> no spoiler because i didn't know what what all numbers you were doing i was like get rid of it that's right i know it was very overlapping like the same kind of articles come up and yeah. i think i forgot you were gonna do friday the 13th and i started writing <laughs> right so too and it's like no no don't need that <laughs> yeah yeah a lot with the numbers that sound like other things they're not a fan of in yeah Asia. so in fact, uh, I have a quote, <clears throat> the numbers 4, 14, and 24 are associated with death for Cantonese-speaking Chinese people, as the words for these numbers sound like the words for death, must die, and easy to die, respectively, end quote. Oh, shit. It just gets worse. <laughs> die, die. Die, double die, triple die. <laughs> wow. Yeah, die means something in German, too. The... Die, Bart, die. It says die, Bart, die on your chest to Sideshow Bob on The Simpsons. No, that's German for the Bart, the. You will not find any fours in Chinese architecture. Like, uh, buildings. <clears throat> buildings are usually missing the fourth floor. <laughs> and remember, wow. in the Japanese lore, like, yeah, I don't know if they just go right from three to five in the numbers because you can't really just like skip an actual floor yeah like skipping 13 it's not super often that things have like a 13th floor whatever but like you'd run into yeah. like having to cut out fours a lot more than i feel like it's way 13s. more noticeable <laughs> yeah it's like one two three five <laughs> so true and do you remember in the Japan lore, the one of the bad bathrooms was the fourth bathroom stall. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Damn creepy Chinese or Japanese bathroom ghosts, <laughs> demons. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chinese people will avoid getting the, the number four on their license plate, their driver's license. Don't want to stay in a hotel or hotel room. Well, probably that too, but a hospital room that has four in the room number because you're already oh, sick. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, this does have a major impact on traffic in one of China's biggest cities, uh, Beijing. Apparently not their biggest city, which is apparently Shanghai, I think I heard. Anyway, mm. but it's still pretty big. And since the traffic is so heavy at peak times, they regulate it. So only designated cars can drive on that time of day on their designated days. Kind of like we have some lanes here where it'll be like, you can't turn yeah. left during these times of day because it's too busy, I guess. Um, but so like from 5 to 7 p.m. only cars with like <clears throat> A and B plates could be on the road, for example, or whatever. But because people avoid the plates with number fours in them, and go for the ones that are lucky, like three and multiples of three, <laughs> so six, nine, and lucky number eight. Um, all of those numbers represent like 12 to 13% each of the overall traffic, the, the cars. Oh, okay. Like a huge amount. <laughs> but only, but no, plates with number four in them only represent one to 3% of yeah. cars slash plates. 
So like traffic ends up super heavy on some days when the number four plates are the ones that are restricted because nobody has those plates. I don't know. It's like the that's weird actual effect. So <clears throat> four is bad, but eight is good. <laughs> weird. It's um. It sounds like the word for prosperity. So this is why we like eight. <laughs> it's weird because like. We don't have that in, like, Canada and the U.S. We don't have, like, a thing against numbers just because it sounds like exactly. word. Like, I've never heard that before. It sounds like yeah, the word for different. that. It's bad. Right. And they have symbols in their, like, their, even their writing is different. So it's, like, a whole different, we just don't yeah. even, it's hard for me to even comprehend. Yeah. We're, like, yeah, eight is just number eight. It doesn't really sound like anything. Yeah. Other than in English, whatever. You're like hate? Oh, eight sounds oh, like yeah. hate. Oh no. <laughs> yes, it does kind of sound like hate. I was like, we just have what homonyms where it's the same word but it means something different. Mm -hmm. Eight, number eight, or eight like you ate something. Like it doesn't doesn't seem yeah. to bother us as much. No, <laughs> no. But uh, I also read that eight represents resurrection and renewal. So hmm. I guess it has some, something to do with that. Yeah. Um, also the biblical story, God makes the world in six days, rests on the seventh by the eighth day. You've got the whole new world. No. <laughs> um, and it's called an angel number, which I think I have somewhere. What the hell that means? <laughs> What is an angel number? Oh, um, uh, they believe people believe they represent divine guidance. I have a quote within numerology. Angel numbers are number sequences, usually three or four numbers that contain repetition, such as. Wait, one, 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 one or four, 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 four. But eight is by itself how can it be an angel number two i don't understand angel numbers these two sites are yeah. contradicting each other a little bit i don't know i've never heard of that <laughs> i think it's yeah because it's more on the numerology side i didn't get into it i'm sorry if you guys know what the hell an angel number is maybe you can explain it to me <laughs> um but it did i did read that it seems to be kind of seen as lucky in the east and west but i was like i don't know we yeah we seem to more lean towards seven here which we're about to get to so we went from four to eight to seven because <clears throat> my notes are super adhd <laughs> yeah you're like we're doing this in order and i was like three <laughs> nine four and well because then they're not all they don't all seem to all have like there's nothing about out there about like five really that i could find you know what i mean like only certain yeah. ones were but yeah then i'm like why is eight before seven i thought i had this right <laughs> damn it i should read my notes out loud to pat and then he'd be like this doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah i used to do that now i just like reread them if they're like longer, I'll like, yeah, reread it one I time did. and be like, yeah, that didn't really make sense. I know. <clears throat> I guess I skimmed it. I was probably at work. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know. Eight might be an angel number. We're not sure. It's also seen as unlucky by some to, oh, this was just about in general general counting you don't want to count anything that you don't want to lose i don't know not know where to put this in <laughs> so it went in here <laughs> but don't count your chickens before they hatch which we do say here a lot of the time yeah know. i've heard that before yeah i'm like okay this is familiar um but <clears throat> don't count your possessions or your money apparently lest it up and disappear which is a problem because when you're broke, you have to count it or you don't know how much you're going to have left over yeah. in your bank account. <laughs> this is not good. 
Um, <clears throat> apparently it's bad luck to count your gambling winnings or your fish that you have caught. One, Maybe. two. How was it like jump a... right out of the boat? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it'd be impossible like not to count the fish you've caught, I guess, unless you're <laughs> counting catching a whole lot of them. Like, how many did you count? I can't say. Well, I see two. A uh... net full of sardines. <laughs> yeah. Some even say you should not count or weigh your child, like weigh your child's you know count their weight i don't know i was like this is different but okay everyone does it the doctor does it for you yeah <laughs> um or and you're not even supposed to count stones in a monument which people would do for stonehenge and stuff because they want to write about it i don't so. know yeah how, how else do you study something <laughs> So strange. I know. They don't want us to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, here's the, here's a way you can use it to help you get rid of something. If you want your warts to disappear, you count them up and tell the number to a stranger, and then poof, they're gone. <sighs> Probably the sure. stranger's gone too, because they're like, "What the fuck, buddy? <laughs> what are you telling me that for?" So gross. Um, yeah, sorry, this is also my fun, part of my random fact segment, apparently. In some places, certain ages are seen as unlucky. 21 is lucky. 63 is unlucky. I guess some people say once you make it to 63, you're then guaranteed a long life even after that. So good job if you're yeah. over 63. Good job, it's mom. like you made it. <laughs> sorry, I just outed my mom. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> um no it's good you shouldn't be embarrassed by how old you are it's a good thing it's, you're healthy you did it <laughs> yeah um and it's said that in japan these unlucky ages are called yaku doshi i could have probably looked that one up <laughs> and they believe for women they are the ages 19 33 and 37 so i've only made it past two of those yet <laughs> Those seem still pretty young, considering. And random. Yeah. We've got the nine, the threes. I don't know. I can't remember if threes are unlucky in Japan now. It's a lot of, it's a lot of remembering. <laughs> yeah. Depending where you are. And the unlucky ages for men are 25, 42, and 60. See, okay. all the ladies' ones are under 40, <laughs> uh, guys. <laughs> Have forties and sixties. I don't know. Fuck. Never heard of it. <laughs> Japan listeners, at us. What is this about? Do we know? <laughs> Does anybody believe this? Is it just yes. something that's on the internet that's not true? Like when yeah. people, I'm like listening to podcasts and they'll be like, I think it was Wine and Crime. They said, oh, I, <clears throat> in Canada, when something's funny, they just say that's jokes, and I was like, where in Canada? <laughs> Yeah, I have lived on. I both remember coasts. hearing that. Yeah, <laughs> never heard that before in my life. No, me neither. I don't know. That's jokes. <laughs> Maybe someone's yeah. trying to make it happen, like fetch. <laughs> Stop okay. trying to make fetch happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we're ending the number series with seven. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Here it's lucky usually. Like triple sevens, mm. you see that on slot machines yeah. and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and people point to like there are seven days to create the world, which didn't he rest on the seventh day? We just say, but whatever. Now we're splitting hairs, making the Bible fit everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, there were seven planets in the ancient world, so I guess that's probably before we could see with telescopes, maybe. Probably mm. couldn't see. Uranus. <laughs> I don't know. I can see Uranus from here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're children. <laughs> the seventh son of the seventh son has magical abilities, apparently. I think mm. this might be in the Bible, too. I've heard that before, yeah. Yeah. Peeling I'm also powers? pretty sure I watched a movie called The Seventh Son. Oh, that does sound familiar. I think so, yeah. 
We've watched a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah. I also have a ridiculously long phobia name. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll see if you can guess what this one is. It is. <clears throat> Hexa Cosio Hexa Cont Ch Ch Hexaphobia. Ch yeah. it's very hex long and... is hex what is that it's terrible it's like the second one you read for the fear of the friday the 13th it doesn't sound anything like yeah what it is it's fear of the devil's number so okay fear of the 666 i should have known that cause hexagon that's what hex Fuck. oh that's true Oh, I kept going, what's hex? Why do I know that word? What, what number is it's that? It's so long. And they said hex like 10 times. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, was it in there like three times? Yeah. At the end, that makes like, sense. There's, yeah, there's a T and then a C and then a hex. So maybe it's more like checks. <laughs> checks, Max. <clears throat> the devil's smack. Checks, Max. <laughs> checks, Max. Oh, no. It's in all your holiday treats. <laughs> <laughs> um oh my god and then i just have six and triple six is lucky in china because six sounds like the word for smooth or flowing <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> this is what it's like in my head all the time okay you guys my daughter said maybe i should she said maybe mom i should try add medication i said i don't know you're doing okay but Sometimes when I read my notes, man, <laughs> I don't know what past Alana was doing. Um, <laughs> okay, we do have some unlucky dates to talk about that are other mm. than Friday the 13th. Yeah. Yes. Okay, this is fun. In Italy, Friday the 17th is the unlucky day. Friday the 17th. Okay. 17th. Another Friday yeah because they like the 13th there as i said right it's yes like them and the egyptians okay friday the 17th <sighs> it doesn't have the same flow as friday the 13th friday the no 17th. but they have a reason quote unquote for it okay uh qu quote because when it is viewed as the roman numeral like written out x v i i and then changed anagrammatically to V-I-X-I, -I. it reminds Italians of the Latin phrase, I have lived, the perfect tense implying my life is over, end quote. Okay. I don't know what <laughs> any of that meant. <laughs> it was like, and you then know... you rearrange it. And it was like, well, yeah, I don't rearrange it. I know it's not alphabetically. I don't know what the word anagrammatically means. I know what grammatically correct means. <laughs> yeah, anagrammatically. They're like, yeah. If what you do was that, the order? And you do what that. was the order again? Anagrammatically. I uh, went V I X I. Which? Oh, not if it goes. I was gonna say, is it like putting, like the three separate. Or I guess the four separate numbers, like in order, being like, there's two ones, there's this five and a ten, I, and like to me, yeah, yeah I would read that as totally different. So it'd be like one one seven ten, or something. It would be like change the order, but yeah, I don't know why it would be ten. Why one, they seven, have to one. change it? <laughs> or seven one ten one? Maybe you said yeah. It's know. it's definitely a stretch for a reason for this to be yeah. a bad number. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, Emily. I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> um, no offense. <laughs> but this I found to be a fun fact. Uh, because uh, my brother's birthday is November 17th. And they also believe if the Friday the 17th should happen to fall in November, it's considered unluckiest of all. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> because apparently November is kind of like the month of the dead there. The kind of like we have the day of the dead in some places it's like mm. the month to remember your lost loved ones all month long so it's already a dead month and then you got your unlucky i guess because it's like 
in October, some places don't quite get snow yet, but normally by November, everywhere has snow that's going to get snow. So that's when, like, a lot of plants and stuff die. So like... Yeah, I don't know what the the reasoning is there yeah. to have, hmm. that, like, well, don't we believe that the veil is open the thinnest at the start of November? But I don't. I can't remember what that has to do with like how we get there if it has to do with the wheel of the year and every yeah everything being dying and dark at this time and then the yeah, sun being remember. reborn the sun s-o-u-n <laughs> being reborn and then we celebrate the days getting longer in the in the pagan traditions yeah it's it's interesting it's all mixed up in together in there you know yeah <laughs> um we're smart. It's okay, guys. <laughs> we'll try and dumb it down for you. Don't worry. No. Or SMRT. <laughs> so smart. <clears throat> or my okay, so we... so smart. <laughs> oh my god. Or my god, I'm so smart. I'm so smart. I get S I get ESPM. I can like totally my breast can feel when the weather is come. What is the quote from Mean Girls? <laughs> She's like, I have ESPN. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I butchered it. Um, okay, so in Spanish-speaking countries, it's the day, it's Tuesday the 13th. That's considered unlucky. I can't remember if I said that, sorry. Um, and the roots for this one uh, said, in Spanish, the days of the week are based off the Roman gods, while the English days are based off the Nordic deities. <clears throat> Tuesday in Spanish is Martes, uh, coming from the Roman god Marta, Mars. Therefore, Tuesday is associated with blood, war, and violence. And hmm. the root for the number 13 being bad is all the same as what you talked about. Oh, and okay. there's also a popular saying, it said, in Spanish-speaking countries, on Martes 13, note casas ni te Barque? Oh my god. Oh, finished. don't embark on a journey. Yes. Yeah. On Tuesday. My, I'm sorry. I don't know how you got that from what I was saying, but I've heard that Tuesday. before. Yeah. Oh, it says on Tuesday the 13th, don't get married or board a ship. Okay. Oh, embarque. It's like, yeah, embark. embark. Oh my god. I used to be really good. Somehow, I think I got a, like a 90-something in Spanish class, but now my accent is terrible. Uh, I I would have liked to take Spanish. It was never offered. Yeah, and if you've got a background in French, then it's easier because you're already... It's similar pronunciation. You're just, you know, a few less silent letters. <laughs> so yeah. Like you're, like, you're like, okay, you, you hit the E instead of whatever. It's similar, and so you can figure it out sort of oh the latin languages um bu -bu -bu, yeah roots eroded in roman and greek culture and i did read that greeks still tend to consider tuesdays and tuesday the 13th uh unlucky as well not just spanish mm. places <laughs> um okay this one makes some sense <laughs> look at me go <laughs> numbers <laughs> break down <laughs> three uh china and most of europe this is lucky used by many chinese philosophers and used in expressions like good things come in threes and genies granting three wishes mm. but in japan and vietnam this is where it's unlucky <clears throat> um it's believed when a photo is taken of three people in a row the one in the middle will soon die oh shit <laughs> I know these numbers are <laughs> creepy. Also, I'm sorry. <laughs> Switch back to the numbers. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, four, four is uh, China, Vietnam, Japan, Thailand. Unlucky, but in Germany, it is considered lucky, and they pointed to the belief that a four-leaf clover is lucky, which you know we've definitely heard of that. Yeah. Um, seven is USA and Europe lucky china vietnam thailand unlucky because in places there the seventh month is the month of the ghosts and people who disrespect the dead in july are doomed to be haunted yeah ghost, july, there's a ghost month in the middle of the summer 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> None of it makes any sense. Um, eight is China and Japan lucky because it sounds like prosper. But in India, it's unlucky ish because it's believed to represent a duality of sorts a thin line between good and bad luck and heaven and hell and i don't know why that is <laughs> they didn't say yeah. um because i got i like to think i got kind of this breakdown summation from but like a little infographic that had was you know like it was oh. nice the way they had it lucky here unlucky there so i was like oh that's good i like the way they have that um and 13 as you talked about is uh, it said italy and china lucky was that what you said italy and china and egypt it just said like ancient egypt and italy that's all it said okay. on, like whatever site i'm sure there's other countries too it said and others but it didn't right and china yeah. really seems to be one of the ones that has a feeling on every number almost <laughs> yeah um okay so yeah especially for gambling in italy it's very lucky you said hmm. something about that did you say about there's a phrase fare tradici translates to do 13 which means to hit the jackpot no i didn't talk okay. about gambling at all oh you gotta talk about the gambling no <laughs> um Oh, and in China, it's lucky because it means assured growth. And again, that one didn't have any more information than that. And then most of the Western world, unlucky, as you talked about. <clears throat> also, this one said the number 39 and said that in countries that are predominantly like Catholic, um, that is lucky because it's an angel number. And that's where I had the stupid quote about the angel numbers that I <laughs> was like now i'm so confused because they seem to be repeating numbers yeah but how does or number 39 <laughs> Weird. they can be pattern numbers i don't know uh, i definitely didn't want to get into numerology because i was like this is already very overwhelming <laughs> um so i'm just cutting out anything about these damn angel numbers maybe i'll have to do a deep dive on those later just so i <laughs> I hate not understanding. Um, and this also said that 39 is in Afghanistan considered unlucky because of something called the curse of 39. Um, oh. Yeah, they got a whole curse. <laughs> and that dates back to an old legend, but also because it sounds similar to Mordor Gal, which means dead cow. Oh, okay. I can see that, yeah. Because they, they, cows are like oh, gods, yeah, yeah. aren't they? So if it sounds like dead cow, then that would be like a dead god right. kind of thing. Yeah, they don't want that. They don't they yeah. like cows. You're right. Yeah. Um, See, that then... one, it's sounding like something kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> Some of these do make a little sense to me, too. <laughs> yeah. But then again, it, it, that list was capped off with 666 being in china lucky because six sounds like smooth and they just think it's good for gambling <laughs> okay i mean a number smooth 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 right like that one's totally different because he in more christianity heavy places like west here it's definitely you see six 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 you're like Ooh, it's the devil the yeah um and then i just had a few things that I stumbled upon when uh, when looking at the there was that stuff that came up about lighting three smokes or lighting yeah three smokes with one with what was it, what was it earlier in, in my notes if you light three cigarettes at once you'll die yeah something like that <laughs> but there's also a superstition that if you light three cigarettes on one match uh, it's very unlucky also because you'll burn so, your finger because that's too finger. long no 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 nay nay um this is called three on a match and the origin may go back to world war one times this one's great okay <laughs> so say three soldiers go for a smoke break in the dead of night in the dark should they use one match 
it would give any enemy snipers around sufficient time to shoot them. Because, <laughs> stay with me here, one lights up, which gives off the spark and the sound of the match, the screech, and alerts the sniper yeah. that's hanging around. And then the second man is like lighting his smoke and the sniper's able to take aim. And then just as the third man lights up, the sniper can see him and boom, fire. Gas, so <laughs> yeah. Sucky. I think it makes at least it's more of an explanation than the one where it's like in Japan if you're three people in a photo one of them's gonna die I said that yeah one already, right yeah yeah this one at least has a, a plausible reason but like wouldn't <laughs> when you're inhaling wouldn't they be able to see like the end of your cigarette anyway yeah that's true that does provide a little yeah. smaller light than a match yeah. but yeah it's also for a longer time you're right shoot the cigarette <laughs> aim for your face that would be so sucky oh, oh you just God. get shot in the mouth shoots oh. it right out of your hand <laughs> Fuck. um oh, sorry pardon me there's also a theory that it came from the match king a shrewd businessman called ivan kruger it's kruger Ooh. Whatever. Trying to make money, make them use three matches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, businessman. And I think Love I have it. heard of him because he brought up. It said he bought up many matchmaking factories in the 1920s and consolidated them. And he was very rich and greedy. Um, and yeah, I think the matchstick girls had like those really poor working. Oh, I was just gonna say, is that interesting? Yes. Yeah. And then he wanted to make more money, so don't you know use three matches. No, don't use one, use three. Exactly. Yeah. Dick. Jeez. That makes <laughs> sense. It does. And there's a few other smoking. This is what I'm ending with. Smoking superstitions. <laughs> We've taken a turn. This is a rabbit hole you never expected to be down with this. Yeah, no. <laughs> In Romania, it's bad luck to give away your last cigarette. It's tantamount to giving up your life. Don't do it. I mean, it's oh. also just giving up your last cigarette. <laughs> yeah, I think I've heard about giving up your last cigarette before. Yeah, people do weird things. Like, I feel like I've heard people have, like, a lucky smoke and they turn it upside down. Like, people do weird things with their cigarettes. Oh, I knew. Yeah, I knew somebody that used to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, like, watched so... her. She, like, bought a new package and, like, <laughs> pulled one out and, like, turned it upside down and put it back in. And I was like, What? I know, I didn't do stuff like that, but I saw people do it. (laughs) Um, Oh, and that it's bad luck, supposedly, to smoke weed with a white lighter. (laughs) Okay. I mean, this is supposedly because Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Jim Morrison were all found with white lighters on them at the time of their death. (laughs) <laughs> okay it's a great great conspiracy theory you know it yeah. really holds up <laughs> people are bound to have some sort of a lighter on them especially those people <laughs> yeah and like how many people have died that didn't have a white lighter on them i mean <clears throat> right people that have lighters yeah. on them smokers <laughs> yeah Jesus. anyway um also lighting a smoke off a candle will apparently kill a sailor so kill a sailor every kill time a the sailor. bell rings an angel gets his <laughs> i know i wonder if russ has heard that one or if they say that in is it just like superstitions a random sailor that'd be so <laughs> shitty i don't know maybe it's the sailor themselves like don't light that off there maybe you, oh. you might burn your eyebrows off you never know you don't know what could happen <laughs> don't know yeah i've never associated with sailors with candles before <laughs> yeah oh, wait. <laughs> maybe i did find a little more on that um according to according to one website um in <laughs> Sailors and candles dot com. No. <laughs> this oh god, what was this from? Uh well something. Oh Is grape it... 
grapevine mag articles how to kill a sailor light a cigarette with a candle <laughs> <laughs> yes i guessed it right <laughs> yeah it's basically exactly i love it, it. Doesn't my favorite thing <laughs> when we're like putting the sources sometimes is I'm looking at a site and I was like that's very on the nose about what that <laughs> yeah. article was about and then sometimes it's not sometimes it's just like keyboard smash but then sometimes you're yeah. like wow that's like a whole like a whole headline like this whole article this whole web yeah. was dedicated to that there's a lot of underscores in between all of your words the entire <laughs> article and that's your headline that's your URL. Blogspot.com. No. <laughs> okay, so according That's to so the, um, <laughs> in a fishing nation, <laughs> in a fishing can't. <laughs> in fishing nation, uh, in a fishing nation. <laughs> that sounded like words, right? <laughs> yes. In a fishing like, nation. <laughs> I'm not even drinking. It's just water. You guys. Yeah, I'm the one that's drinking. <laughs> it's a sure. It's my schmoozy. Alana got Super drunk off a mango smoothie. <laughs> oh, God. It started to ferment. <laughs> it's our kombucha. No. Superstitions about the sea and sailors are very common in a fishing nation like Iceland. Shani, shaw, shay, 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 shay. Oh god, this particular superstition is probably not Icelandic in origin, but that doesn't make it any less meaningful to Icelanders today. Why candles, though? <laughs> you can actually find this superstition across Northern and Eastern Europe, with it being especially prevalent in seaside towns. Okay. It is understandable, then, that those communities would want to protect their sailors, but what do candles have to do with it? According to numerous sources, this superstition goes back to the days before unemployment insurance, when seasonal workers would have to find some way to make a living in the off-season. Um, a reportedly popular way for sailors to make money was selling matches. Ergo, if you use a candle to light a cigarette, you're effectively taking money away from sailors and slowly starving them to death. Okay. It's the opposite side of the match match issue. <laughs> Don't use the self-checkout. You're taking yeah. people's jobs. Uh, oh, yeah. And then I... What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about sailing stuff. And I, I had... Um, remember when we did sin the Sinister Ships episode? And it was like episode 35. So yeah, I'm like a long time ago. ago. <laughs> It was. It's like a year <laughs> ago. I know. They're all a blur. They're all a blur now. But I, we like, I talked about sailing superstitions and then posted like a post on our Instagram. I think I posted something on our Instagram. But I remember I had a text conversation with my sister and she said that she was surprised I didn't mention the sailors getting tattoos of swallows. Because they represent that you've sailed 5,000 nautical miles. Maybe I did oh, talk about it after. Yeah, I think episode. we talked about Aired. it after. But now I think she's going to get a hula girl tattoo because she's got to sail to Hawaii this last year. So nice. Superstition, smoking, sailing, numbers. I'm done. That was the end of my <laughs> wow. Very, very chaotic fun. notes. <laughs> very superstitious. Super uh, not just a little stitches. <laughs> no. Superstitious. I'm, I'm not very superstitious, but I do believe in like um, you know, manifesting things with good thoughts. Like yeah. you know, keep the bad thoughts out because you don't want those to have power. I don't know if that makes it's like more superstitious or more just new age. I'm not <laughs> very superstitious but i believe in karma especially like instant karma yeah and i yeah. feel like it most happen most often happens when i'm like driving and somebody will get mad and they like you watch <laughs> them like whip past you and yeah. then you see the light ahead of them turn red and i always just go instant karma <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, you're ah. like you like pull up beside them or whatever you're like yeah, Hi. Well, here we all are 
far. <laughs> yeah. You got so far, didn't you? Especially when you're like doing the speed limit. Ugh. Yeah. Or they like fly past you and then immediately have to hit their brakes because the person oh. in the lane, they just went in because they were mad at you. So they go into the opposite lane. And then the person yeah. in the opposite lane is going slower than you. So they have to slam on their brakes and you drive past them and the person that's in front of them. And you're like, can I? should have stayed in my lane <laughs> exactly uh, i love it when you win the lane game <laughs> yeah and I'm this was in, the correct lane <laughs> i do that out loud i'll just go instant karma and I just <laughs> <laughs> yes i do yeah. love the idea of karma and what goes around comes around and yeah i heard that on a different podcast that karma too can be like not think not exactly like that like instant karma but more like just your attitude like if you're shitty to someone yeah. at work and then you come home and then you're gonna be shitty to someone at home or you know what i mean it just keeps snowballing and like just oh the, yeah yeah what you get out what you put it you get back what you put out to the world and stuff like that for sure i yeah. tend at my jobs to and like job they have now or like jobs i've had in the past tend to avoid the people where they can't talk about anything other than how everything and everyone around them sucks like <laughs> yeah everything's, they have no control over anything that happens to them because it's all just... yeah everything sucks yeah. and i got mad at so-and-so because of this and this is happening because of so-and-so this is happening because of this <sighs> and it's like you ever think that like 99 percent of that is like your fault like you're the problem if, if you're looking to have a bad day it's really easy to have a bad day if you're yeah yeah and if you're going out of your way to only see the bad and like things then it's very easy for that to come true like oh yeah that's, that's all you pessimism. focus on yeah it's true it's like all yeah. those um random tiktok videos i saw going around where people would be like uh, they overlay it with a song clip where they're going, I'm the problem. I don't know how the song <laughs> goes, but it's something like, I'm the problem. I'm the problem. It's me. And they're like, you know, they're like, they, yeah. they're owning up to something they do where they're like, I know it's my fault. Right? <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, just own up to it. We're all, you know, struggling. <laughs> Imperfect. Yeah. <people. laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's our uplifting TED talk for you <laughs> for the end of this episode. <laughs> girl power. I've been listening to a lot of uh, <laughs> girl podcasts. Look at me go. We're just going to end this on a nice high note. And <laughs> yeah. It was nothing too murderous this week. So that's a nice, good start to the year. <laughs> I, I'm still just listening to Crimes and Consequences, basically. Nice. And Bailey Sarian yeah. and yeah I binged uh don't laugh the Meghan Markle's podcast she um, actually yeah. was really good uh had on a bunch of different women talking about different stereotypes that get like names uh, that get used against us like bitch and diva and bimbo and she yeah had Paris Hilton and Mariah Carey you know what I mean people you know talk what about how like these things are yeah I watched, oh, what was it? Was it the hot ones or something? The one with the hot wings. Sean oh, okay, and the, the hot interview ones. show. Yeah. Um, and they had, they had Paris Hilton on there, and oh, yeah. yeah, she was really good. I think it was back when like yeah. what was going because she was in her own house, but yeah, she was really good. I liked hers. Like, yeah. when I was younger, I watched a she few cool. episodes of the one her and... Uh, Nicole Richie were on, The Simple Life. Yeah, a few of those yeah, where they too. did those, like, <laughs> terrible jobs and, like, the farm and shit. Yeah, and she played, um, they wanted her to play the, like, yeah. the dumb blonde, so she did. She pretended she didn't know what Walmart was. I guess that was fake. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, there's a lot you see that people's I guess media or like public appearance is not how they really are and I'm happy mm -hmm. at least that like some people are using social media now to kind of let you in more instead of like using it to create such a like kind of yeah. stupid public 
persona they're letting you in on one maybe that you think they've had for a long time but they don't actually have it's like the opposite like some people are using social media to be like the stupid like kind of people where like some other people are using it to like maybe correct the like misconception you've had of them maybe for a long time yeah Yeah, Uh, i think so which is really cool it's nice to see people being themselves more Yeah, and, like, getting to tell their side of their story in their own words and stuff and not have to just... Yeah, like, so directly, because they can just, like, record a video and they can post it and you can watch it. It's not going through PR people or whatever, necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no, and we talked about her on the Patreon episode that... uh, you yeah. unfortunately weren't a part of, but she got no. hit in the bling ring, and they, yeah. the reason they targeted her first was because they thought she was dumb, and that if she, anyone was gonna like leave their house unlocked or leave the key under the mat, that it would be her, and that kind of sucks because it's like you got targeted just for that, like yay, like then you got your privacy invaded. And yeah, stuff and, I mean they weren't wrong; she did have, <laughs> but like they, they're in, you were in a gated community, like. No wonder you yeah. thought you could be a little bit more safe. Like you have a and a lot card. of people, like especially in true crime cases, we talk about and they left their door open. Like that happens so often. It's like, yeah. why are people? Oh, I can't imagine sleeping, like knowing my door is unlocked at night. Or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh you shouldn't God. have to lock it during the day, but like, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> anyway, I not... I won't even like go in my house and like go to the bathroom and or anything i won't like come in my house to do anything without locking my door like even if i'm literally really? like coming yeah. in going to the bathroom and gonna be leaving again immediately i will lock my door in between that i trust like fucking nobody it must be different i guess i don't live alone i don't have that perspective yeah. on it of like i mean you got your guard cat but <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So I get me. it. Gordo would fall in love with them. They'd be like, "Pet me." <laughs> but I don't think we locked our doors very much growing up in New Brunswick. We're kind of mm. not out in the sticks or anything, but like, yeah, we always did. We well, we our... lived on like a main main street too, so yeah. there was a lot of people like that would walk down our street, and and that's here. Like, this is a much yeah. bigger city, oh, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, for sure. Not victim blaming. We're just saying, some t- yeah, it can be a good idea to lock your doors. <laughs> yeah, it's a very simple thing you can get in the habit of that <laughs> can do quite an amount to deter people. Right. Keeps out the honest thieves. That's what Pat says. <laughs> yeah, but the people that are are very very determined, they'll always find a way. But yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of the people will, if it involves effort they'll avoid the hassle <laughs> yeah i'm gonna post a picture of our uh prowler we had last night that coyote was that was yeah. eating crab apples out of our <laughs> our tree in the front yard which is pretty crazy that he came that close to our house on a yeah like we're a cul-de-sac but like we're a we're in the city <laughs> like, they're they're know. everywhere in the city i've had ones run yeah. across my front yard and everything too oh really like, don't know where you live wow. yeah and then we It'd be, I guess, closer to where you are when I was down by where you live. <laughs> Sorry, the, <laughs> <That's> the dumbest. <laughs> um, the humane <laughs> society or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. In the fall and in the winter, they were always posting like notices when you went because oh, yeah. they just have their dog walking little like loop and stuff, and they would always post on there like coyote yeah. sighting, like. Oh, be yeah. on the lookout because they will come in the thing and they can attack you and they can attack the dog like right if it's a place that a dog is gonna like yeah it seems like it's a place that a coyote is gonna like especially around here because we like do have woods and stuff i guess but yeah because the yeah. pat sees them on his route too and it's around a little pond area but there's houses everywhere so it's crazy how like bold they've gotten perhaps maybe in the last few years i don't know yeah <laughs> have coyotes in new brunswick <laughs> i think they did say it's gotten a lot worse in the last few years pandemic um, 
Yeah, well, mm-hmm. they come in looking for food and everything, and then if they're around people, it's like any animal, you get they get used yeah. to people and stuff like that, and then they aren't afraid of people anymore, and then they next deck yeah. is like if they feel threatened, then they're gonna attack you. Mm-hmm. But, I'll take. Yeah. I'll, I'd rather have the bunnies there eating the the, the berries. And yeah, the they're a lot cuter. <laughs> yeah, so much cuter. <laughs> No matter anyway, how post, big, I took a video yeah. though. I'll post it to my Instagram of the the coyote jumping up into the tree and grabbing oh, that's the crab apples. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> we were all looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got such big fluffy tails. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this episode on Friday the thirteenth. Hopefully, nothing bad happened to you. <laughs> uh... Maybe something really good. Yeah, this better. episode came out. Woo, we're back. That's true. Yeah, we are something back. Something good. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that's your something good. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we hope to see you back next week. For oh, yeah. my birthday episode. Woo-hoo. Or day oh, yeah, after my birthday. Plan a little drinky poo. Yeah. For your birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's going to be vintage crimes or... Like antique crimes, yeah. anything like that. I know, I love that. It just sounds cool. Vintage crime. Yeah. It's a vintage. Uh. <laughs> vintage is so cool. Oh my god. I'm so hipster. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Catch you next week. All right. Bye. Keep it cryptic, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> This has been Castles and Cryptids. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Casts, and our YouTube channel. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. On our website, you can listen to all of our episodes as well as view pictures for each of our segments. Check out our Patreon page to view all of our tiers and become a Patreon supporter today to unlock monthly bonus episodes and behind-the-scenes content. We are working on an Ask Us Anything. You can submit questions by social media or by email at castlesencryptids at gmail.com. Do you have a spooky ghost story, a creepy cryptid sighting, or a thrilling true crime tale you would like to share and have us include in a future episode? Send us your listener story by social media or by email please include the name that you would like mentioned. Our music is by Kobe Affair. Our logo and artwork is by Antonio Garcia. Thanks for listening.